USS Cyclops From All Walks of Life I'm Marvin Barish, the author of two books concerning the USS Cyclops and the prequel, Murder on the Aberenda. My website is posted here and will also be available at the conclusion of this presentation. The Collier Cyclops was a U.S. Navy ship that fueled the fleet from 1910 to 1918. The term Collier refers to her coal carrying capability, although the ship also carried fuel oil. Initially, the ship was placed in service and was operated by a civilian crew. When the United States entered the First World War, the Cyclops was placed in commission and manned by U.S. Navy officers and sailors. Early in 1918, the USS Cyclops was tasked to transport a cargo of manganese ore from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil to Baltimore, Maryland. The last sighting of the ship was at her departure from a layover at Barbados on March 4, 1918. She never arrived at her destination. The Navy Department officially gave up the USS Cyclops as lost on April 13, 1918. However, the ship was not officially stricken from the Navy list until June 14, 1918, 105 years ago. All persons on board the ship were then declared as deceased. Lost were 309 persons. That included the Cyclops crew and Navy passengers, the U.S. Consul General at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, who was also a passenger, three Navy prisoners, and two U.S. Marine prisoners. This presentation will introduce you to several personnel assigned to the U.S. Cyclops on her final cruise. Many of these men had never been aboard a ship prior to the war. Their backgrounds were varied. They came from all walks of life. Bert Jacob Asper was the ship's medical officer from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Prior to receiving his naval commission, Dr. Asper was appointed to the post of assistant physician at the City Detention Hospital of Baltimore. Later, he joined the staff of the Shepherd and Enoch Pratt Hospital in Towson, Maryland, where he studied and treated psychiatric cases. He then returned to the University of Maryland as an instructor of clinical pathology, and then was appointed assistant physician and pathologist at Springfield State Hospital in Maryland. Carol Goddard Page from Hyde Park, Vermont was a non-commissioned officer in the infantry program at the University of Vermont. Prior to his naval service, he was a hide buyer. George Henry Allred of Randleman, North Carolina was a railroad fireman for the Southern Railroad at High Point, North Carolina. Andrew Theodore Askin was from Steelton, Pennsylvania. Prior to his U.S. Navy service, he was a porter for the Ridgeway Drug Company in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Fred J. Beale of Findlay, Ohio, worked as an automobile mechanic. John F. Bowes from Duck Creek, Wisconsin, had spent all his days in that village before joining the Navy. Before enlisting, he was engaged in a fishing business with his brother. Carl Eugene Clausen was originally from Brooklyn, New York. 
Prior to his naval service, he was employed in a ship chandlery by A.B. Johnson. Ernest Randolph Kramer from Asbury Park, New Jersey, was in the employ of the Central Railroad at Jersey City. Harold Edward Donnis. Prior to his U.S. Navy service, he was a telegraph operator for Western Union in his hometown, Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Samuel Godfrey Dowdy of Norfolk, Virginia, was employed by the Norfolk and Washington Steamboat Company and the Old Dominion Steamship Company. Earl Grigsby of New Palestine, Indiana, was employed as a laborer. James Bernard Hake from Richmond, Virginia, was a clerk for the CNO Railroad. Lewis Herbert Hardwick from Atlanta, Georgia, was a porter at the Pratt Laboratory prior to his second enlistment. Rupert Aza Harrison of McAllister, Oklahoma, became a school teacher at Fame School in McIntosh County, Oklahoma, where he taught until the U.S. declared war on April 6, 1917. Lawrence Merkel was from Baltimore, Maryland. Prior to his naval service, he worked at his family's tailor shop. Foreman Austin Mize of Odenville, Alabama, left high school to enlist in the Navy. Edward Scott Morgan, Jr. of Washington, D.C., was employed by the Washington Times as an advertising agent. William Archie Pope was originally from Fountain City, Tennessee. Prior to his naval service, he was employed at the Brookside Textile Mills in Knoxville, Tennessee. Julian Iverson Scarlett from Brunswick, Georgia, was employed by a tobacco company. Samuel Alexander Skellinger of Camden, Indiana, was a carpenter prior to his naval service. Francis Only Strong of Ashland, Alabama, was employed as a timekeeper with the Twin Cities and Western Railroad Company in Minnesota prior to his enlistment. John Freeman Wainwright of Roanoke, Virginia, had previously served in the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service. In civilian life, he was employed as a clerk at the Van Leer Drug Company in Roanoke. The U.S. Cyclops never arrived at her destination. She was lost with 309 aboard. There were no survivors. You've met but a few who served on board the U.S. Cyclops from all walks of life. I hope that you will consider adding these books to your collection. They will be well worth your time. My contact information and more concerning the U.S. Cyclops story is on my website. Thank you.